Let me give some detail about the dilemma, the frightening dilemma that religious misunderstanding in its extreme causes. Um, in particular, the misunderstanding that um, that is the imprisonment of guilt. Guilt prevents the person pursuing what they truly value. Now remember the existence of uh, the universe of uncertainty, including of course the uncertainty about the existence of God, enables the person to practice what they truly value. Now religion stops that, gives you such a, a burden of guilt that you are imprisoned in um, some sort of conformity outwardly and the guilt does it inwardly so that you are constrained from being yourself if you were as it were whether you're functioning in a part of society or or isolated. The pressure builds up this tremendous desire and will and, and need to be what you want to be, but which is unacceptable in the society, the religious society in which you dwell. It might be because the whole society is such, or it might be that your family structure is uh, strongly religious. And by strongly religious, I mean a religion that specifically has a great element of blame. A strong belief system in which the beliefs are not the same as the true beliefs of the individual members. The guilt strengthens the wall of the religion, the culture fights the harder to portray the religion that is accepted as being right. There's a, a great need for obedience. The pressure builds up in each individual to do what they want to do but the pressure cannot be relieved. In the end, for some individuals, the pressure is definitely greater than the effective constraint. So they move to the second stage, which is the seizing of freedom despite the religion of their society. These are the criminals from that society's point of view. The society has um, crushing means of dealing with such criminals if it catches them, if it detects them. So there's a tremendous hypocrisy in this um, society there where the pressure is just building up too much for the individual. They break the norms of the religion and they do it as secretly as they can for fear of... So there's a, a, an outward conformity of great fear and great pressure in the society. With many people in the second stage no longer being suppressed by the condemnation, the condemnation being 
suspended from them because it's not clear that they are in breach to the society. It's an enormous hypocrisy. It's the Hippocratic stage of the society, stage two, where this um, breach is going on on a massive scale, the fabric of society starts to collapse. It moves into its third stage of open war against the religion and its destruction. With a mayhem now of members of the society all doing what they want to do. And of course it's a great learning situation, revolution, moving towards a new order, a new equilibrium. A new political correctness, a new religion, philosophy. One that manages enough freedom for pressures not to build up too much. And such a system might be found rather haltingly in that it's attempts at um, interim solutions that explode very quickly and there's a resettling and, you know, aftershocks, if you like, to the original revolution. But in terms of our society, if you still maintain this view of the essential independence, the um, notion that the individual is a free agent, and um, is to be held responsible for their behavior, then of course you have the same system as you started with, just that the individuals are fighting against a, a different set of values. But essentially the same, a blame situation. You know, in a communist revolution, you're now possibly struggling um, with new communist order to be a good communist. And uh, you're the enemy of society if um, you're not a good communist. And uh, so most people are held by fear. How stable is this situation? Well, Soviet Union didn't last a uh, hundred years. Because freedom is the notion that's applied to many things. Freedom of speech is not the same as assuming that you have freedom of um, choice. That you are an independent free entity. You can make um, and is held responsible for making um, good decisions, having good values. You might uh, very reasonably assume that um, people should be given freedom of speech, not because they are free individuals, but because they have difference, differences in wants that need to be um, addressed. Um, taught, taught to, um, helped with, have some opportunity perhaps um, to act out without so much fear and duress being put on them that they daren't do so. The basic problem is that societies want certain outcomes of civilization, but the individuals don't. We teach. Part of that teaching is guiding people to observe the outcomes of different values and behaviors in the society. 
And if we don't learn in those two ways, so to speak, then as the pressure builds up, we learn by experience. And the pressure will build up because society, in as far as society, is not allowing us to do what we want to do. And we are children, so we do what we want to do is um, by no means necessarily in the interests of the other children. This is cynically realized in religious and non-religious societies. Both societies structurally respond by having means by which they educate citizens to function in a civilized way. It may use um, the concept of blame, which is extremely economic in terms of resources. In the modern world, we increasingly shift to um, force that's structured according to our technology. And um, we might have an information flow um, that makes uh, it economic to rely on this system rather than um, the guilt approach. Fear is typically cheaper. A system based on fear is typically cheaper than one based purely on teaching, training. The society to remain civilized has to constrain too much expression of the actual values that its members have, where they are inconsistent with the state values. But it must allow some release, and um, so it might, for instance, have the situation where no, you can be um, pretty callous of other people. It's um, your business right to compete in the following ways even if it causes them great cost. Or it might be that, um, no, you can, you know, escape from some contract by being declared bankrupt and so forth. Difficult, but enables you to get out of a tricky spot and so on. And is the cost on other people, I don't know, but you know, in some sense, society is trying to manage opportunities for you. Um, it might allow all sorts of hypocrisies in the, for the elite. Um, they're not keeping the rules of the society much at all, but are willing to um, keep enough of the rules in place and act accordingly to keep other people from expressing too much that would um, cause society to just crumble and be mayhem. And there's a criminal, of course, who, for whom the pressure is far too much and they do act out even though society is going to crush them for it, execute them or um, you know, imprison them or fine them or anathematize them and confine them in that way, identify them. Uh, but it allows them to, uh, or if you like, it finds it can't constrain them from expressing their own values uh, as distinct from that declared by the society and the religion per se. Um, but it does act accordingly. So we have these extreme antisocial behaviours. Um, 
the wife suddenly, you know, hits you in the face or explodes and, I don't know, cuts up all your clothing or something in an expression of um, tremendous pressure within that's built, built, been built up. And they're no longer able to constrain themselves according to the dictates of the culture they're in or the situation that they personally see they're in. What should you do? Well, you should, first of all, you're, you're given a, a certain primacy of self. You should protect yourself by moving out the way. Um, uh, if society wishes to come in and also do something about it, it will. But either way, you must move to a position of um, safety if you possibly can. Which may be by keeping them away from you by force or keeping them away from you by your own stealth and avoidance of um, slipping away out of range. So what we think of as a civilized society is this constant um, brinkmanship, seething um, mass of uh, um, values that are contrary to the declared norms uh, and um, breaking out the here and there according to what constraints um, are binding or not binding in effect, in reality. And society tries to adjust in a way that makes the future better, not worse from the point of view of those that have the power to influence the future of the society. It might be the church, it might be the business structure, it might be the political structure, um, even the military and so on, as a, a separate sort of independent entity. Um, stability of society itself rests on some integrity uh, peace accord between different centers of power or their removal. From the godly perspective, um, the society is um, functioning, meeting the basic needs of much of its um, members. Um, as regards actual continuance of life, but also giving a learning situation, both from the wisdom of the ages of the society, its culture, and um, and the way the culture is adjusting to trying to hold the, well, you can see it as trying to hold, uh, to the extent that it's allowing the civilization to continue. It's providing the classroom. That's the overall function of society from the godly point of view, that people are learning to, um, well, the they are adjusting their values according to their learning, and their learning is by both teaching, uh, observation, and experience. Uh, too much of society experiencing um, the expression of their values, and of course you have no society at all. So society str strives to have a some sort of 
ongoing acceptable mayhem, if you like. <laughs> there is crime to some extent. Uh, there are the non, non-aligned non members and, and parts of itself, but overall it's performing its... Um, its civilized function, which is to provide the basic means of life so that you can be a person and um, have values, your values, in a situation where those values will be modified by, by the training of the classroom. Thank you, Heavenly Father.